Good evening, and welcome to another Did You Know? Well, we have exciting program this evening. I have someone coming on that's very creative, and they're going to tell you about their creativity and some of the things they're doing and maybe some of the things that you may have ideas to do. Well, let me get started with my commentary at first. Well, you know, the election over, but the election is not over. And why I say that is, is that I want all of you out there, and I said I would bring this up every week. Remember, if you plan to run for office, you need to think about it now. There's going to be some judgeships up, some school board, some city council, a lot of municipal elections. So instead of sitting there complaining about this and that, step up to the plate, and why don't you be one of our leaders? I think that's very important. So you got a couple of weeks to think about it because the primary will be in May but you'll have to get uh, some petitions signed and filled out to get on the ballot. So I want you to think about it. And a lot of you out there, as I've been saying for a long time, we have to look out for ourselves. We cannot wait for somebody to ride through the community and help us out. So let's stop complaining and do for ourselves. The other issue that I have is that you may or you may not be aware, there's a big issue down, down the street there at the Capitol uh, the Democrats and Republicans are deciding who is going to lead the leadership of the House of Representatives. Um, the Republicans say they got enough votes. The Democrats say they have enough votes. So, but we got to keep an eye on it. Uh, based on what I know right now, um, we will eventually, the Democrats will eventually have enough votes. But because two people had to resign, uh, one young man there, Austin there, he is now going to be the lieutenant governor. And Ms. Summers out in, in the western part of the state, she's going to be a congresswoman. And so they resigned. So when we get those two, we will have enough to, the Democrats will have enough to control the House. Now, the issue is the Democrats said, I'm ready to step in now. And the Republicans are saying, hold off. Here's my concern. If the Republicans is in until they have special elections, that means the Republicans will be in control for a month or two. And no telling what they may do. And one of them you better be careful about because you know they've been talking about voter ID and they'll probably bring that up. So they'll try to run a few things through before the Democrats take control. So we got to keep our eye on that because I, I, th I think it's very important. The other issue is, is that we can't go to sleep, ladies and gentlemen. We just can't. We got to stay what's going on. You know, we're going to have a new governor coming up. We're going to have a new congressman, new senators. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it to the Democrats because I'm looking right at you. You always ask Black folks to come to your beck and call. You always want our support. And we deliver. So don't get amnesia because we're getting tired of you asking for our support, and then you get in office, and then you get amnesia. We are going to start holding you accountable. But we're going to hold the Republicans accountable too. We're going to hold all our elected officials accountable because we got to stop letting them off the hook. They come and ask us for our support. They ask us for our money sometimes. But then when they get elected, they can't seem to find out where our neighborhood is or they can't seem to find out where our church is where they can't seem to find out where our social halls are. So I'm letting everybody know today 
that I'm putting everybody on notice that we are going to hold your feet to the fire. One. Two, remember, all y'all been complaining about kids can't do this and kids can't read and write and we can't do this and we don't teach history. Take some responsibility yourself to do that yourself. You can teach kids history. You can tell them what's going on. You can let them know a legacy. I am totally convinced if we don't know our history and we don't tell our history, then shame on us because that's part of the problem. If we would just tell our history to these young people out there, let them know that we had great leaders, we had scholars, we, we did a whole lot. But if you let other people define who we are, we don't get that picture. That's why I have this program, Did You Know? So I can define the narratives of what I think is very important to us. So keep that in mind. Well, tonight, you know, I believe in you all have always known. I like to bring different people on to tell their story, to say what they're doing and what they're not doing. And you know, we're into the festive season, whether it's Christmas, whether it's Kwanzaa, you know, whatever. We're in the festive season. So I met a young lady last week. Her name is Stephanie McCall. And she was at the Kwanzaa Fair. And I was walking through all these different stalls and looking at different things. And one of the things I've always wanted this program to be is have people come on and say what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing, for two reasons. One, so they can tell their story of how they got to where they got to. And two, for you to sit back and say, you know what, I can do that. Because I am convinced if we expose our young people, or even adults, if we expose them to certain things, then maybe they can realize they've been thinking about doing it so they can do it yourselves. So I'm fortunate here tonight. I have Stephanie McCall on, and she's the owner of Note Cards and Art. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her introduce herself, and I want her to tell her, tell you who she is. You got okay. it. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie McCall. Uh, I'm a artist um, from Charlotte, North Carolina. Some of you that are um, watching this show, you might remember me. Um, I was uh, a resident here in Harrisburg for a number of years. I sang with Dayspring Ministries and uh, Kevin Lamont Myers and, and Ernie Tillman and uh, all of them. Um, but uh, I came here um, to visit some family and uh, I kind of travel with my artwork. So I found out about this Kwanzaa event and went to the Kwanzaa event. So since I've been gone from Harrisburg, um, I have become a, a artist, uh, a pandemic artist. Um, when the pandemic hit, uh, I was a substitute teacher and school closed and I didn't have anything else to do. So I ran out and got a whole bunch of canvases and paint brushes and paints and started painting. So um, I have found my new passion. Uh, I've always been creative, but this is probably the most creative that that uh, I've become. So, so okay. So the pandemic got you decide to get some painting and some brushes and things. But what ins gave you the inspiration that you really wanted to do this? Did you have a passion before, uh, or did you just decide that I'm bored? And I don't have nothing else to do, so I'm gonna paint. No, uh, actually, uh, in um, high school, I was in advanced art classes. And then uh, as a substitute teacher, I was a substitute teacher at a school of the arts. Okay. So um, I was always subbing for the art classes and things like that. And when I would see the kids create, creating and painting and things like that, I would go home and try my hand at it. And so when the pandemic hit, that gave me time to focus on the things that like I've seen the kids do. So let me ask you this. So what would you tell the audience and the young people about how to develop maybe an idea or a passion that you now have become a very successful artist? Okay. 
I am an advocate for promoting, I mean, pushing kids to do something creative. As simple as this card. See? Sure. Okay. Uh, as simple as this little note card right here. Um, a student that is that likes to draw, they could actually create their own note card, take it to Staples, get it copied, get you some nice envelopes, mm -hmm. and start start promoting your own note cards. Um, there are there are many ways for people to just start their own art career, um, just simply by taking something as simple as a little design and putting it on a card. So you're saying it doesn't have to be difficult. No, it does Just not. if you have some creativity, mm -hmm. then you should maybe do that. Mm -hmm. One of the issues is, and maybe you can answer this since you are art teacher as well. A lot of times we seem to not motivate our young people's vision mm -hmm. or we draw something because I'm not a good artist I probably do a little stick person right so what would you say to the audience and to the grandparents to tell their children or whoever what would you say to them in terms of being an artist or being creative because one of the issues that I do realize is that sometimes we let people stymie or poo-poo our vision and our dreams. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to encourage, encourage people to don't allow them to do that? Because what has happened is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, kids watch football and they watch baseball and they watch all kinds of sports and they want to be those things. And a lot of them can't be those things, mm -hmm. but they could probably be great artists. So what would you tell them out there that they should do? One, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Um, in in Nebraska, when 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 I had moved to Nebraska, I did a marketplace, bringing all these people out of their base basements with all their crafts and and small businesses. And I ran into a, a tenth grader. She, this was during the time when Powerpuffs, um, cartoons were big. This little girl hand drew with permanent markers on t-shirts, Powerpuff Girls, and would sell every t-shirt, every single marketplace. So you have so kids, kids have to believe in themselves. Their parents have to encourage them to, to follow their dreams. And I think a lot of times parents, parents kind of overlook what their kids are doing parents parents should get involved encourage them push them on if they need something like paper to like print things on or t-shirts so that they can draw um you know give them what they need to be successful so what you're saying is is to allow kids to be creative so what you're also saying that we need to be supportive. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're not supportive because we can't do it. And since we can't do it, we tell the kids they can't do it. Right, right. You know, it, that, it's just like, I and always use this analogy, uh, you'll tell a kid, you know, the parent might have not been good in math. Mm -hmm. And so they're not good in math. So when the child comes home and they're not really sure about math, and the first thing the parents say, well, I wasn't good in math, so you're probably not good. That may not be true. No. So the point is of what you're trying to say, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that we have to start supporting our young people and allow them to be creative. And if they do draw a stick person, that's what I used to draw, and put eyes on it. Maybe if somebody had encouraged me, I might have been a Van Gogh. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, is that we got to look at every avenue out there and let all our children be creative. And like you said, this young lady took some T-shirts, did whatever, and she sold them. And every she made single one. And she made money. Mm -hmm. And she made money. So we have to stop thinking all the time that everybody's got to be a football player or whatever, sports. 
And I'm, I get hung up on sports because everybody thinks that's always the avenue out. Right. And there's just so many other avenues out. And that's why I like to have these programs to bring people on like you so that you can say, you know what? Creativity. Because we have a lot of people that are very creative in many different things. But if they just either had the opportunity or, or the encouragement. Or the encouragement. So mm-hmm. here you are tonight. And you tell me if I'm wrong. You said that um, God take this little because you know, I bought a few of these. You take them mm-hmm. and she can create them, and you said they can form their own. Mm-hmm. Now, how would they do that? Now, what would you, you think? You'll simply just you um come up with your own design. Now, this this was an original five by seven canvas. I painted it. I took it to Staples. I had them lay the original on the printer to make the best copy. And then um, you uh, ask them for card stock and they will print it like a card and you fold it and you actually have a card and then you can sell them. They're like two dollars, you know, you know, and it's 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 generating income. Uh, It's giving you something that you personally can be proud of in yourself. uh, you don't necessarily have to write a note. You could actually frame this and hang it on the wall. Um, kids just need encouragement to do little things. They don't have to do massive things. You know, it's just the little things that that just get you going. When I was a kid, my mom taught me how to knit. She taught me how to crochet. Um, you know, she never said, oh, Stephanie, you can't do that. She went out, bought me crochet hooks and and yarn and and everything, and then and, and then allowed me to sit down and learn it. Did I make anything major? No, but 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 it opened up that well of creativity, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. I've made footstools, I've made clothes, I've painted, I've drawn, I've written poetry, all because someone believed in me. Because somebody believed in you. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you said is that you got to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. One of the problems is sometimes our young people don't get that encouragement for a number of reasons. And that's why I think it's important to have people like you to tell that kid, that young person, You can dream. You can dream. Because so often our neighborhoods are painted so bleak. Our neighborhoods, if you didn't know any better, would be depressing. When you hear about when we grew up in the neighborhood, it was like it was depressing. And it wasn't depressing. It was about survival. And Mm -hmm. so having people like you is my job is to try to get people to understand we have so much talent out there and it doesn't have to be major. It could be unique. So in saying that, one, you've already said, believe in yourself. And two, we got to do a better job of encouraging. Mm -hmm. And would you say that artistic, There are a lot of people out there that could be artistic, but if we would encourage it. And one of the things that we do, and some of you are not going to like what I've said, what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm saying, is that sometimes we stymie people to be creative because in our mind we say, why do you want to do this? Because you you ain't going to make no money. You're not going to make any money. See, that's it. You ain't going to make no money. No. (laughs) You know, I shouldn't tell the story, but I will. You know, when I was young, I wanted to play an instrument and I went to school and school had given out most of the instruments, the ones I wanted to play, you know, the horns and the trumpets and all that. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a violin. I took the violin home and my father said, what you going to do with that? You can't make no money playing the violin Mm. at that point. He was not exposed 
to the violin to where we know it is today. Yeah. But it was about exposure. Mm -hmm. Now, just think, I might have been a great violinist and I wouldn't be on this podcast. Well, I might be, but I'd be playing the violin. So that's why I think it's very important that we encourage people to follow their dream and stop poo-pooing on, you ain't going to be this and you ain't going to be that. And a lot of you don't like it, but that's what we say. And that's what we tell young people a lot of times because we didn't do it. And because we didn't have the vision to do it, but then we need some encouragement. So now let me ask you a couple other questions. Now, you've always liked art, right? Right. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be painting. I mean, it could be other kinds of creativity because art could be a lot of creativity in terms of vision or how you express yourself. Mm -hmm. So how do you come up with your characters or, or your little name? How do, you, how do you come up with these? They are actually in my head. I actually see them in my head. I'm not a, um, what do you want to call it? Um, I can't look at you and draw your picture. Okay. I'm not that kind of artist. Um, I can I can only create what I see in my head. So any any um images that you see me draw, it's just something that's in my head that has to come out. It's almost as if I'm I'm pregnant with an idea, and it won't leave me alone unless I get it out on paper. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're saying so. Therefore. And you would would you recommend this? If a person has some creative idea, say drawing, and they're not really getting a lot of support, but would you suggest maybe they 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 keep a little journal to 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 draw some things because later on they could come back to it? Mm -hmm. Journals, sketchbooks, notebooks. Um <laughs> I've even sat and taken paper towels or toilet paper and drawn on that and then glued it in, glued it into a notebook. Did you did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? She said she used all kinds of things. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to have a, 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 a big notebook. Creativity. And you take the creativity and you write that creativity or you draw that creativity mm -hmm. when it comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I watch shows where They'll say to a person, how did you write that great song? And they said, I don't know. I was just walking down the street and that Melanie or those songs came up in my, and I took the paper bag that I was carrying something in and wrote those lyrics. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So That's, that is how the creativity flow. When it's flowing, you have to catch it. You have to catch it. And um Regards, I mean, if you're writing it on your hand, as long as you've got it down so that you don't forget it. If it's a melody in your head, people people have cell phones every, I mean, everywhere. You pull that out and start recording just so that you won't lose it. And another thing too, this is this is this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves from being a substitute teacher. Um at the school of the art there are so many talented kids they sing they draw they act i think teachers need to do a better job explaining to kids what they can do with their craft i think that's major. why do you let me ask you why do you think that's a problem one i'm gonna have two questions one why do you think it's a problem and what do you think we could do to solve it and, you know, it's about knowing people and seeing people and looking back at people that have vision and dreams that became very successful. And that's why I keep saying I have this kind of shows so that we can so that we can talk about those things. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that. Why do you think that is you just think that, that, that people have formed a box for us or they just don't see the creativity? In us, I don't know because um, when I was a substitute teacher at that school of the arts, I I had kids come and they were like, "Miss McCall, 
I love singing, but I don't know what to do with it. There's there, there's a voice behind the commercials. There are somebody has to play the music behind the 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 a musical score mm -hmm. behind the movie theater, uh, the 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 movies, and so I saw where teachers weren't telling the kids like you know what, if you really want to sing. I need you to stay focused because you can go here, here, here with that voice. And just like this simple little note card, you have a kid in your art class that likes to doodle. Tell them to doodle it, make them some copies, tell them, hey, sell these. You don't, you don't have to do note cards. I literally saw one girl, she made a little teeny tiny cartoon book. I said, sweetie. This is amazing. I said, take this, go and ask your teacher to make you some copies. Come back, show me the uh, flip book. And I'm going to tell you to take it and sell it to your friends. The little girl sold all of her flip books. All the kids were like, oh my God, you did this. But we have to have, see, that's the issue. We have to have people to encourage us. We have to have people to tell us that there's dreams out there. I mean, because if you don't, you sit in the corner and you get to believe in yourself, I, I can't do it, or I don't have that support. So tonight, you've then told some young people out there, or grandparents, you can tell your children or whoever, or yourself, that if you've been doodling, then maybe you can do note cards. If you want to paint, maybe you can paint. You might not be Van, you might not be Van Gogh, but at least you are are chasing your dream and you're doing something that you like. Mm -hmm. And so you say that it's about exposure. And when I say exposure, like you said, they don't realize that somebody has to, to do that movie score. Um, there, 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 there was a, you know, there was a, there's some people here that have done a lot of things. There, there's somebody here um, that, did some clothing for one of the plays here, you know, for a national play. Uh, there's all kinds of people out there that can do so much. They just need a little vision, hope, and somebody to tell them that they can do it. The lady here in her. Okay. I, first of all, let me just explain that I am so excited with Harrisburg Okay, because coming back and just seeing the murals on the buildings, I mean, art is real in Harrisburg and I, and, and, and I'm just so impressed. I'm excited at the things that like I'm driving around the city, seeing all the different murals. But the thing that blew me away was whenever I found out that, um, I think her name is Dion Renee. Mm -hmm. She's the artist that created the flyer for the Woman King. Came right out of Harrisburg, right out of Harrisburg. And I've and I've called friends back in Charlotte and be like, the person who created that flyer for the Woman King is from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So I mean, you know, but we need to know that, and people yeah. need to know that because everybody always pours uh, 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 water on things. Well, you think of people in their successful life. Um, August Wilson is famous now, mm -hmm. and he has all those wonderful plays. And um, growing up and going to the University of Pittsburgh, he was walking around writing up that that kind of stuff. Not that I ever thought August Wilson was going to be great and famous, but he ended up being that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he wrote the... The, the one play that people talk about, the Jitney. Uh, the Jitney is a play. <laughs> it's really about a Jitney. And in Pittsburgh, when I was growing up, the cabs did not come to our neighborhood. And because it didn't come to our neighborhood, but if you had to go somewhere, we'd call a Jitney. Mm -hmm. and, and a Jitney would be some somebody that had a car and they would work out a little store there and you call and you say, uh, I want to go such and such. And they asked you, what's your address? And they would drive up to your street and blow the horn. And you go and you get in the car and you would, they would take you where you want. Uh, because we couldn't call a cab. Uh, if you were in downtown Pittsburgh and you wanted to go up to the neighborhood, 
you could stand there all day and all night. The cab ain't taken. And if you try to go to the cab, he'd tell you it's off duty. He wouldn't. But it didn't. He would drive slow past. And, and, and so that's really how he developed. He developed the jitney from the neighborhood. It wasn't that it was a rocket scientist mm-hmm. that, that we just had jitneys. And that's how he got the jitney. Um, I, I mean, I do know some people that ended up being famous, even though people told them that they weren't going to be much of anything or they need to go get a day job. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my <clears throat> good friends, fortunately, Phyllis Hyman, who ended up committing suicide, but she was a great singer. Well, when we were growing up, Phyllis would win all the little talent shows and all that. And then when she got ready to go out of high school, you know, people told her to go get a job. But she worked a job, but that's not what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. She always wanted to be a singer. And every time that she would go out, something happened, she'd come back. But she continued to believe and I can honestly say to you, ladies and gentlemen, Phyllis Hyman ended up being a very, a very successful person mm-hmm. based on her own drive, mm-hmm. based on her own drive. But I can tell you, I know people told her, yeah, you win the talent shows, but you're not going to be whatever. And that's why when I see people like you or see Chris Franklin just with the Harlem Globetrotters and he's the metal arc lemon, that's why they bring them in because they worked on their craft. Somebody had a vision, a dream that they had, and they didn't allow anybody to pour water on it. Um, so you're saying, hey, it, it don't cost a whole lot. Mm-mm. You can be creative. So if you don't have a whole lot of paper, a whole lot, you can get your little whatever and you draw it and you put it in, put it in a bag or whatever. And then when you're ready to progress on it, you can you can do it. And work on your craft every day. I work on my craft every single day. I would love to be a full-time paid artist, but I can't. I have to work my nine to five, my um eight to five job. And then from six until 10, 11, 12, sometimes two, three in the morning. It just depends upon what it is that I'm working on. I give my craft its due. And I- one day, when I wake up, who knows? I may be that full time. I, I think, that, and I think that's very, I think that's very good in what you're saying. And the reason I think it's very good what you're saying, she works on her craft. See, a lot of times we think everything is supposed to come natural, mm-hmm. or we think we're supposed to get instant gratification. You think if you're supposed to get a paintbrush and you get, and you know, you sit there and you get an easel and you put it up there and you think blah blah blah, it don't work that way. In anything you do, you got to work at it. Mm-hmm. And the more you want to get better at it or refine it, you, you got to work at it. If you're a seamstress, you got to continue to practice sewing. If you're a painter, you got to continue and, and work on it. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I think is important. And I hope that you emphasize that even a little bit more here. You got to work on your craft. You got to do the work. And with they have the young people out there you don't want to do the work. No. You want instant gratification, mm-hmm. and it don't, and it don't, and it don't work that way. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Mm-mm. And so I think that what you're saying is true, but at the same time, you gotta practice. You know, people talk about golf all the time. They're golf. Well, one thing about golf is, and I tell everybody, I, I'm not a golfer, but if you're gonna be a golfer, in order to be a good golfer. You got to play it all the time. You got to go play. You can't go out there once a month and hit the ball and think you're going to hit it. You got to, you got to work at it. If you know, if you want to be a basketball player, then you got to practice. You got to learn to dribble. You got to learn to shoot or baseball. You got to learn to hit. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I work with people in running. People think you just run fast. Don't know there's a technique to it, but you got to work at it. And that's the thing that I, I, I want to emphasize here tonight is that we have to work at your craft. And for what I've learned, um, and I basically taught myself this, there are no mistakes in art. Hmm. You may not see what I see. I may paint something and and I'm like, oh my God, I just ruined this whole thing. But if I show it to you, you'll be like, oh my God, this is amazing. 
If I don't tell you what the mistakes are, you won't know what the mistakes are. So as an artist, people have to trust their instincts. If you make a mark, you can either work around it, work it into the piece. You don't give up and throw it away and say, oh, this is this is no good. You, you fight through it. In art, there's phases. There's that middle phase where what like I call the ugly phase. Nothing is working at all. <laughs> and you know, but you have to keep pushing your way through. You have to keep blending more and more paint and and trying different things. And then eventually it will work itself out. You know, a lot of people give up on on things. And in art, the beauty of art is not giving up. Okay. You just find a way to just keep working through it. You heard that? I want her to repeat that again. Uh, would you repeat that again? There is no mistakes in art. There's no mistakes in art. And I, I'm agree with her because I've gone to a lot of art shows. I've seen a lot of things up on that wall. <laughs> and I have had asked myself, is that art? <laughs> Who painted that? And why? And why? <laughs> yeah. And then I look down at the price tag and I go, huh? And just look at them, I just do it up there. Mm -hmm. But they may have a creative mind and people see things from a different, from a different standpoint. Mm -hmm. And there's stories behind it. And there's a story behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do cards. What else do you do? Oh, let's see here. Yep, I do cards. Um this is something that I just started doing. Um, I saw a lady um, doing what I call squeegee art. And she takes paint and she takes a squeegee and she pulls her squeegee down and she creates these, these images. Well, I didn't want to copy her. So I worked and worked and worked until I created my own technique using a squeegee art. Uh, squeegee tool and so these are these are just two examples of what I do with uh, a um, squeegee tool tool you don't always have to use paint brushes there's a lot of different things that you um, can do to um, create art um, this is this is called my blockhead art um, series this is um, charcoal I mean not I'm um, charcoal um, Colored, colored chalk. This here is acrylic paint, but this is this is actually chalk. See that, ladies and gentlemen? Creativity. See, so you don't always have, she's using chalk, mm -hmm. you know, so there's different things that you can use. But and, before you go any further, mm -hmm. how can they reach you? How can they get some of this stuff that I even have? So <laughs> how can they reach you? So um, I have an Instagram page. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at art by S McCall. There you go. I do not have a web page yet. Back. I do not have a web page yet. Um, I used to have an Etsy page, but I kind of gave up on that. Um, I can create all day long, but put me on the website and building all these Etsy pages and things like that. I, I kind of, that's not my gift. So, so you're going to have to find somebody. So I have to find so you're somebody have to, you that have to find somebody, me. a webmaster, somebody that's going to have to help you get, get this out there because you yeah. have, because you have some, uh, you have some great ideas. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that you're saying creativity is the key. Oh, creativity is very, very much a um, key. Um, I do mixed media as well. I work in cardboard. Uh, unfortunately, um, well, the piece that, I, that I'm talking about is four feet wide by three feet, but it's a, a woman uh, image. She has a huge Afro. Her Afro is made out of cardboard. Okay. Literally, I ripped cardboard, pieces of cardboard and layered her hair to make it 3D, make it come off the page and look like an afro uh and then and then use charcoal and water to make the 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 black matte color that makes it look like our hair so um yeah when it comes to art 
I mean, you can use anything. I was scrolling through Instagram today. I seen a guy take um, computer floppy disk and he glue them all down to a canvas and, and actually create a base and then paint an image on top of the floppy disk. So you don't have to be so traditional. You can take wood, you can take... Um, you can take cardboard, you can take found objects from just walking down the street and finding a piece of wood and just paint something on there. There's a, a famous artist down in Miami, Florida that was homeless living underneath the bridge and he painted on everything that he found outside with him, cardboard, um, pieces of wood, whenever the city would come in and tear down a building, he would go get the scraps of wood from the different um, uh, buildings and he would paint on those. And over time, people, and and then um, he just gave his artwork away. But over time, people people were collecting his art and then putting it in a museum. He would paint on bricks. He would paint on rocks. So, you know, when you have that gift, when you have that passion, you don't let anything stop you. I, I mean, I think what you're saying is very important because sometimes if we use some of the, th you're, what you're saying, if you use some of the things around you, you can create what you want. So you don't have to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can just find things. So if you find some buttons and then you find some some other ribbons and some stuff. But if you have a vision, if you have an idea, then you can pretty well put it on a mat to create the image that you want to create. Mm -hmm. I've okay. seen artists literally paint on leaves. Like um, some trees has the really, really big leaves. They'll go get a really big leaf and then they take their little fine paintbrush and paint images on a leaf. Creativity comes in a number of different ways. I think it's good in Harrisburg because we have a number of art galleries, Black art galleries mm -hmm. around now that you can um, express your art and show your art. Mm -hmm. And I think that we as a people need to understand that art is very valuable. Mm -hmm. you know it's about it's about exposure it's about what, what, what you know and what you don't know mm -hmm. and so when you you grow up and you don't think art is worth a lot of money now you realize if you knew what you knew then then you can make a lot of money because art does sell it does and people need that but it's about exposure I mean when you really think about it, it's about exposure mm -hmm. you know yeah if you grew up in a big city yeah you can go to a museum but if you don't go, if you don't go to like in, when I went to school, yeah, we went to the museums. That's very important because it's about exposure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, you have one, two, three, you have three or four black art galleries around here. You have the Susquehanna Art Gallery. And you can, you're, you can always ask somebody, can you put their work on? Mm -hmm. I had a young man in here last program. He has a place downtown. He's willing to put your art up. So like you said, as long as you have your passion and your dream, and as people could see on the screen here, mm -hmm. all, all, the, all of your work, oh, yeah. all your work is on there. Mm -hmm. You could do, it's about the creativity and the beauty of what you see. Is that what, you, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And then also too, like that, like the um, huge piece that um, the um, piece with the, uh, cardboard that piece costs five thousand dollars but I have learned over time I can't go out to a Kwanzaa event and take that five thousand dollar piece and think that I'm going to sell it I might but maybe not but what I learned is just since I'm not this famous famous artist make little small pieces because people want just a part of what you do you don't always have to have these huge, massive pieces that cost a, a lot of money. Um, you can do small pieces that people can take away. I definitely encourage people to start their Black art collection. Just start with something small, you know, and then 
and then work your way up um, into the bigger pieces of art, but make room in your home for Black art. Don't just go to TJ Maxx and Marshalls and buy paint paintings that match your furniture. Art is used as a create as a conversation piece. Okay. You know, um, if you if you get one of these wooden pieces. This right here is a conversation piece. You go to TJ Maxx, you're not going to have that conversation piece. Somebody will walk into your house and be like, oh my God, where'd you get that from? You know, and then like you flip it over and it says blockhead art, you know, it now becomes a conversation piece, something that's interesting in your house to talk about. And I think that's good that we, that as I said earlier, you're right. We need to do two things. We need to invest in black art and we need to create black art. Mm -hmm. And we need to support Black artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're now at a point, which I thought we were there a long time ago, that we have to start to support our own. And we have to support our own in a number of things. Mm -hmm. And art is, is a very good one, as you say. Um, you know, all these churches, all these organizations, they need to purchase black art from a lot of black artists around here. Mm -hmm. Now you may, they may not be famous today, but when they get famous, you wish you had that piece on your wall. That's right. But we have to do that, but we don't encourage that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I'm sitting here saying, oh, do we really talk about black art? Not really. I mean, we can even take it a step further with African art. There's a connection to it if we take a look at it and understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have someone say, I want an African drum or I, I, I want a statue. But the reason they want those things is because that is what we've been exposed to. Right. And so we should be exposed to to all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it's the African drum uh, or, or, or art that people tell a story. And what we're realizing now, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, would you say art tells a story, especially on our trials and tribulations? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. If you just, if you study art, you can see um, there are artists that draw from their pain. There are artists who draw from a political um, uh, advocate perspective. There's a, th there, there are artists who draw from a point of love. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why art, um, artists paint what they paint. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of political painters out there that tell a story with their artwork. And we have to start <laughs> researching it. Researching it, but telling our story. Telling. We haven't let anybody mm -hmm. define our story. We let everybody else paint us and define us and not always in a positive way. And sometimes it hurts us because it puts a negative image of us out there to the world. And sometimes we create that same negative image based on what we're told. Mm -hmm. And we got to stop that. Mm -hmm. It's hurt us. And we now got to take control. You know, my, my big problem is, is that we've always waited. And I say this all the time. I'm sure my heart's get tired of it. We'd be waiting on this person to come in the White Horse to come through the neighborhood and set us free. It ain't going to happen. No. And it haven't happened before. Mm -mm. So you say to me, well, what should we do about it? We take control ourselves. We do for ourselves. You know, we, you know, we want everybody to buy. I want everybody to buy black art. I want everybody to buy it. Does it? I didn't say you had to be black to buy it. I said you want everybody to buy black art because there's a vision. Mm -hmm. And people do buy it mm -hmm. and people do sell it. Yep. 
And sometimes I'm watching TV and they'll have somebody come on and they made a little rag doll and took some whatever. And now they're selling it and they're making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And you sit there and go, huh, I could have did that. I could have did that. So my thing is to have people like you on to say, hey, I'm regular just like you. I'm chasing my vision. I'm chasing my passion. But guess what? You can do it as well. Mm -hmm. So what else do you have? You got block art. Now the block. Would you show that again? This one? Yes. She said this is a conversational piece. Yeah. People come and say, oh, look at that. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's a conversation piece. Piece of wood. Mm -hmm. It's a piece, piece of, of wood. wood. Mm -hmm. Piece it's of wood. Yeah. And this is this is chalk as well. I was just playing around one day. I was like, hmm. Wonder what would this uh chalk look like on a piece of wood? And that's what it looks like <laughs> on a piece of wood. So, you know, um it becomes a conversation piece. This <clears throat> excuse me. When I lived in uh Tuskegee, Alabama. Um, I had never seen cotton before. I grew up in Nebraska and then moved here to Pennsylvania. I had never seen cotton before. And I had went through a cotton field, cotton on both sides. And I was coming back from Montgomery late not, late one night and it was it was dark and I was driving down the road between this cotton field and I literally had to slow down because I could feel it, it just felt like I could feel the slaves trying to run across this street across this road and this is something that came from that experience of being in the south this is this is this is to me a a couple from the south that were very prideful and this was like Sunday's best so um you know it, it's just little things trigger ideas to come forth if you open yourself up and allow it to come through you um okay but, let's go back to that one mm -hmm. let's go back to that one so as you drew that picture you got the feeling about your ancestors. You saw all the cotton fields there and you were able to connect back to what they went through. And that story you just told because back in the day when they worked in those fields, Sunday is the day they dressed up. Mm -hmm. So people need to understand that. I, I, I think that's why I get so upset about history and us not understanding history. I mean, have I seen cotton fields? Yes, I have. Have I seen tobacco fields? Yes, I have. Remarkably, I don't know if it was remarkably, but I saw my mother crop tobacco wow because my mother and father were from south from the south south carolina and some of them were some on my mother's side were sharecroppers it is what it is mm -hmm. and but you were able to take what you felt going through the cotton fields feeling what they went through but yet you took the high road and showed them in their sunday best Mm -hmm. That's what. Um, you know, when you talk, I'm hoping that people get some inspiration from right. what you're saying. Is there some other things that you want to show? If you oh, um, please you. show what you want to show, because you know, right. you know, I have to tell you, when you have these kind of conversations, <laughs> clock be running fast. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. This piece here. Um, Remember, I said there are no mistakes in art. This piece, I started this piece, um, I was trying my hand at abstract art. Abstract artists is basically putting paint on a canvas and 
doing whatever. So I, I was trying something new and I didn't like what I was doing. So I just left the canvas hanging on a wall for two, three days, walked away and kept going by looking at it. And I kept seeing this orange area right here. This orange area looked like a tutu. So I just said, okay, so are you telling me that you're a ballerina? And so I saw these little areas here that look like legs. So basically this piece here was built. I built this piece by what I saw in this blob of paint. Um, so, so I built the ballerina out of this orange area, made it look more like a tutu. When I got to this area here, I saw this area here and it, I was like, hmm, that looks ancestral. That looks like, that looks like an ancestor overlooking the ballerina and giving her insight on what to do and how to do it. And that's how this piece was developed. So this piece is called an Ancestral um, because it's almost like an ancestor look, watching out for, for their um, ballerina okay. family member. Um, what would you, in the last few minutes, what would you want my audience to hear? What would be your wisdom or what you would want them to think about? One, um, believe in yourself. Two, look inside yourself. Find out where, where does your passion lie? Um, and then develop that passion. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of, of, of exposing it to the world. Is everyone going to like it? No but then nobody likes everything anyway. So who cares? You, you know, do, do what makes you happy and believe in yourself. And um, am I, do I consider myself a fine artist? No, I, I consider myself an artist. And when you label yourself, when you label yourself, you make it more real. I, I, and I agree with that. Totally. So how can they reach you again? Instagram at, no, what is it? Art by S. McCall. You definitely can uh, DM me there. Um, yeah, that's it. So that's how you can reach her. I hope that this program gave some people some inspiration. I hope also it shows you that it's not always have to be about rocket scientists, but it could be about working with the things that's around you. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing that you said tonight, I, I think, is creativity. You said creativity, believe in yourself. Open yourself up. Hmm? Um, open yourself up. Open yourself to up. To that creativity. Open yourself up to that creativity. Because the problem is we allow too many people to influence us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the influence is not good. Right. And uh, sometimes it's not good. And other times it's time as you. And sometimes we relate to quote unquote peer pressure mm -hmm. because being an artist ain't help. Yes, it is help. Because, you know, you go out and you say, well, I'm an artist. And an artist is a, create, it's a creative person. But what you said tonight is even more important. It's a creative person, but not, not only painting, but like you said, if you are a person that's creative and you want to write a play, if you're a person that you created, you want to direct a movie, or you're a creative person that you want to create the costumes, there's just so much out there that you can be. And we need to think out of the box. Yes. Is that right? That's right. So we're going to leave on where you got to think out the box <laughs> and be creative. And let me just tell you, I hope you learned some things tonight. Because some of you out there, y'all can just create this yourself. You can even make a few dollars. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, you can make a few dollars. Plus, you got a few for my dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, hey, have a good holiday. 
and I'll see you next year. And hopefully I'll be back here saying the same thing. We got to look out for ourselves. We got to do for ourselves because we can't wait on anybody to ride in our neighborhood and take care of us. That's great. So thank you for tuning in and believe in yourself when nobody else believes in you. Because believe me, I think all of us, we want to admit it, have said that to ourselves. All of us had naysayers or whatever. Could be something very small. But you believed in yourself and guess what? You did it, but you didn't tell nobody. But you believed in yourself. So take them little steps. And hopefully when it's all said and done, We'll build a big mirage of ideas and creativity. So thank you again for tuning in to Did You Know? Thank you for joining the Richard Utley Show on The Voice 17104. We will be here on The Voice 17104 every first and third Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Once again, thanks for joining. Remember to visit us on Facebook at Richard Utley.